grateful. We are grateful. We are thankful. We are careful to be thankful. You've done so much. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory, glory be to God. And I welcome you today too of this wonderful conference. We give God praise for what he's said to do. I want you to know that uh, for every gathering unto the Lord, it is for a purpose. And because you're connected to this, that which God has purposed for your life will be achieved in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate uh, the set woman, Pastor Bidemi McMordy. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Pastor Mark Mordi, thank you, sir. And everyone in leadership of the Well Oasis International, the Lord bless you for everyone connected. I pray that this will be a divine encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to say to yourself, flow. <laughs> hey, Rakasha Tayaba, flow. And I'm going to start even by reading the scripture for the theme, Ezekiel 47. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. The front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. This particular Bible verse, it talks about water flowing from the temple. I want to stop there for now. What is a flow? A flow is a steady stream of a thing. It could be water, it could be anything. A flow describes something moving from place to place. This particular session, I'm going to decree and declare according to the word of the Lord that in your life, your flow of grace shall not be terminated in the name of Jesus. Your flow of power will not be broken. He says a flow, something that is continuous. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, every good thing that has been flowing in your life will not terminate. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, when you are talking about a flow, I want you to know that the flow has a source. Ah, there is somewhere, it says, the water was flowing from under the threshold of the temple. Ah, your source will not dry out. Ah, I decree and declare and I prophesy your financial source will not dry out. In the name of Jesus, your emotional source will not dry up. In the name of Jesus, that which makes things to flow into your life, it shall not dry out. In the mighty name of Jesus, your flow of anointing will not dry out. Ha. Somebody, your ministry will not dry up. Your business will not dry up. In the name of Jesus, the love in your family will not dry up. There shall be a steady flow in the mighty name of Jesus. When Joseph became the prime minister in Egypt, there was a flow of favor. Aha. There can be a flow from somebody that will flow to a whole nation. Just because Joseph was favored, his family got that favor. They relocated from Bethlehem to Egypt. For generations, the flow of favor was there for the children of Israel. That flow of favor sustained his family throughout the famine. Just the favor from one man. I prophesy to your life and mine. God will make our children to be channels of flows. Financial flow. Flow of honor. Flow of grace. Somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. Joseph brought a flow. That reached his brothers and his family for many, many years. But alas, the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter number 1 verse 8. It says, then arose a king that did not know Joseph again. <laughs> and then now put all of them under bondage. I decree and declare, hey, that favor that is running in your life now, it will not run out. Akaraba, there will be no king that will not know you. I, in the name of Jesus, I'm decreeing a flow of generational favor. Akaraba, Shantayadaba. Joseph had long died, yet there were generations that were there. I decree and declare generational favor, generational anointing, generational wealth, generational anointing. In the name of Jesus, have you not seen, even in our nation, we can see some families started certain businesses, but it didn't survive them. When the leader dies, airlines, newspapers, we've seen it. Ah, that thing in your hand, a caribou shatter. That business in your hand, that ministry in your hand, and in my hand, there shall be a flow to generations unborn. 
in the name of Jesus. Our God is a generational God. He made the grace to flow from Abraham to Isaac, to Jacob, to generations. I decree and declare the mantle that God has put in your hand. Let it have a generational flow in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, generational wealth flowed from Abraham to Isaac, to Jacob, to Joseph. Generational wealth. It will not dry up. Generational faith. They knew just one God. Abraham, the God he knew is the same God that Isaac Ah, our children will not call a strange God. In the name of Jesus, in these days where there is so much perversion, there shall be a flow of faith. Hey, indeed, Apostle Paul was telling Timothy, he says, the faith that I saw in Lois and in Eunice, I can see the same in you. I decree and declare to your life and mine that there shall be a flow of faith. Hey, the Jesus we are calling is the same one our children, our grandchildren will call in the name of Jesus. So there can be a flow of faith. There can be a flow of wealth. There can be a flow of anointing. The Bible says Philip had three daughters. They were prophetesses. There was a flow of anointing. Somebody, ah, that mantle of ministry in your hand. It won't dry up with you. In the name of Jesus. And so every grace, every power, every anointing that you need, that will last I call it forth in Jesus name. Glory be to God. And so what do we see in this Ezekiel 47? You are going to see when you read the scripture up to the end. It says there was an angel with a measuring line. And he began to measure 1,000 cubits. After 1,000 cubits, the first flow was that the water got to the ankle level. What is this telling us? It is telling us about process. God did not bring 5,000 cubits at once. Somebody be ready. God is with you. But you see, God cannot give you more than your capacity. As he measured a thousand cubits, the water got to the ankle. And when water is at your ankle, you can wade through the water. It's just like you have a little flood. And the angel measured this. Again, what is it about the angel? The prophet Ezekiel said there was a man with me. Somebody, you will not lack divine guidance. (laughs) In the name of Jesus, in this world of different voices, you and I will not lack divine guidance. The angel was with Ezekiel. He was the one taking him from one level to the other. As you go from one level to the other, you will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, where I come from, they said the dog that wants to go astray will not hear the voice, the whistle of the hunter. There was a man with his prophet showing him everyone that God has placed in your life to be the angel with your measuring line. It could be a mentor. It could be a book. It could be a relationship. It could be a church. There is always the angel with a measuring line in different forms. You will not miss it. Ezekiel stayed with the angel level by level. When the water got to the knee, he didn't say, angel, I don't need you again. (laughs) somebody you will not miss your divine guidance in the name of Jesus and so this angel measured a thousand cubits and then the water rose first to the ankle and then it got to the knee what is this talking about incremental grace Uh incremental grace I'm speaking to that work in your hand let it begin to grow in the name of Jesus incremental favor incremental grace capacity enlarging in whatever you are doing your business, your ministry, even in parenting receive incremental grace in the name of Jesus the grace of last year is not enough for today's challenges and so when he measured a thousand cubits the water rose from the ankle to the knee listen people of God the ankle is just the beginning I don't know where you are right now your ministry may be at ankle level your business may be at ankle level hey what is it that the word of God says do not despise the days of small beginnings your water at the ankle level gives you the opportunity to wade through the water at the ankle level cannot drown you so when you make your mistakes at that level you can correct it do not despise the days of small beginnings because we are in a state in a nation where people want to blow overnight anybody that blows overnight can blow out and blow off There is the place of the ankle. There is the place of you staying at that place to learn. And watch this. People are careful to find out where did you come from. If you see anybody anyhow now, they want to find out where were you. Want to know who this person from where. So, your ankle level is very important because you are building your pedigree. 
Yeah. And when you get to that level, when they question you, they can say, who ordained this one? Where did he come from? Who ordained this one to ministry? Where did you serve? You just came and just built a big church. <laughs> no. Your ankle level history is very important. And then he measured a thousand cubits more. So God will release to you the grace according to how your capacity has increased. Many people want to do a lot of things. I was telling some people in our ministry, we're going for a retreat, and some were giving excuses. Ah, no, I can't go. Oh, this, oh, that. And I told them, if you cannot take excuse from your husband to go on a retreat for two and a half days so that your spiritual life will be better, but if you want to be a woman preaching to go to Singapore that will receive invitation, and then they'll call you to come and preach in one women's conference, you, won't, you like that. Everybody say, eh. I say, if you cannot <laughs> sacrifice now, the big things will not come. So, People of God, your ankle level will increase and it will get to a knee level. It takes a measuring. It takes an increase. How do you increase your capacity? Learn more. How do you increase your capacity? Submit yourself for training. How do you increase your capacity? Be hungry. Be hungry. Don't be somebody who is complacent. What do you have? There is yet more land. (laughs) The Lord told Joshua, you are old now. Look, I still have more land. Where are you? What is it in your life that you think you have arrived? You have not arrived. If you think you have done well, just go and see people who have gone ahead and you will know there is yet more land. So as you increase your capacity, grace will be increased. And then the angel measured another 1,000 cubits. And when he measured it, the water got to the waist. What is it about the waist level? When he got to that waist, <laughs> hey, it was no longer a water you can wade through. If you've been to the swimming pool before, the water at the waist is not the same with the water at the ankle. Maybe the baby swimming pool. Somebody get ready. Even as your capacity increases for every level, there is a devil. As your capacity increases, you may be looking at increase in sales. You may be looking at increase in numbers. But you've got to know that there are certain challenges that come with increase. You must be prepared. Be ready to expand your scope in learning and in delivery. The angel began to measure, what is this? It tells you and I that God has more for us. No matter the level where we are. There is a grace in God that gives us access to more. If we are ready, if we are prepared, God is able. When we are ready, the teachers will appear. For everyone that is hungry, never lose your hunger. Ezekiel stayed with the angel. And the angel kept taking him from one level to another. Watch verse 5 and 6. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. The way you walk at ankle level is not the way you walk when you need to swim. There is a level you get to in life. You've got to learn how to behave at that level. (laughs) There is a level you get to in life. As a matter of fact, your company must change. When he got to that level, what if he couldn't swim? He said the waters was so much that I could not cross it. The water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. Number one, a river that cannot be crossed. Verse 6, he said to me, Ezekiel 47 verse 6, Son of man, have you seen this? Somebody, have you seen this? Can you see where God is taking you? It is a river you cannot cross. Yeah, it is a grace that cannot finish. It is an anointing that cannot run dry. Have you seen this? Are you ready for this? Are you prepared for this? There is a level. It says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it come into the understanding of man what God is set to do. And so I don't know where you are. God has shown you through this prophet that there is a level of a water that cannot be crossed. The grace of God does not finish. Hey, he says, I could not swim in the river. I could not cross. No one could cross. And the man led me back. I'm prophesying to somebody who is watching right now. I want you to lift up your voice as well and be your own prophet even as I prophesy. Say in the name of Jesus, I swim in the river of grace and it will not finish. Mention your spouse, mention your children. I decree and declare the river of grace we swim there in the name of Jesus and we will never ever come out of that river in the name of Jesus. 
it was a river in which we needed to swim and we could not finish we couldn't cross hey you will not cross to the other side of grace the other side of grace is disgrace somebody you will not cross over you will continue all the days of your life say I swim in the river of honor you won't lose honor everything that the Lord has released into your life and family lift up your voice and personalize it in 2024 and beyond in the name of Jesus the works of my hand my family I swim in the river of honor in Jesus name do you know there are some people that come out of that river hey we see it all the time when you look on social media you will see some people who were stars they were stars earning big money all of a sudden one single sickness they are doing go for me they came down from honor ah the wisdom that we need that we will not fall out. Arika Shantayaba. Hey, Vashti was a woman of honor, but she fell to dishonor. I pray and I prophesy to somebody. Hey, error, error will not take you from the place of honor that God has put you in the name of Jesus. Where I come from, Yoruba people say, Ashishi Onikba Ukolawomi, Anima Reku Shata. Somebody, I pray for you. Pray for your children. Error will not take grace from them. Error will not take glory from them. Some children, you send them to school and they fall into error and they begin to take drugs. Pray over your children. Error will not take my children out of grace. Error will not take my marriage out of grace. Error took Vashti out of glory. God had already put her in a glorious place. She was a queen. She was royalty. But she missed it. Lift up your voice. The sea and beyond we will not swim out of the river of grace it became a river I could only swim and I couldn't cross you will not cross to the other side of happiness on the other side of happiness is unhappiness you are not crossing to the negative in the name of Jesus the prophet he began to say the angel took me to this side where I saw what will not run out he saw a river that he couldn't come out of our families will not come out of the glory cloud he has put on us in Jesus name. Do you know that there are some families that they have a flow of longevity. They live long in, the, in their family. Yeah, it's a flow. You see their grandma, you see them. Today I decree and declare there will be no untimely death. Nothing will break the flow. Hey, a flow must not be broken. That's why it's a flow. I decree and declare the flow of the grace upon your life. It will not be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Ha, a river that I needed to swim in. Lift up your voice. I swim in the river of favor. Akayata. Hey, my family swim in the river of favor. My business, my ministry. Begin to speak to, yeah, lift up your voice and begin to decree and declare. I decree whatever you say. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I swim in the river of favor. My husband, my children, the works of my hand. Lift up your voice. Decree and declare. I swim in the river of favor. When you are swimming in the river, you are covered with water. Him from my head to my toe. Lift up your voice. Say, I swim in the river of power. The Bible says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Hey, and you shall be witnesses somebody your life will witness the glory of God your marriage shall be a witness your children shall be a witness in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and declare and declare I swim in the river of enlargement there shall be no limitation lift up your voice and declare and declare the river is so wide he the river of goodness over your life is so wide. In the name of Jesus, you will not run out. I prophesy to your life, your grace will not expire. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, declare and declare. The grace that God has put upon my life, it will not expire. In the name of Jesus, the grace of my ministry will not expire. The grace of my family will not expire. Lift up your voice and declare and declare. 
somebody you can see grace. Uh, that is God added to your race. Uh, grace uh, is the workings of God that is beyond your ability. <laughs> grace uh, is the manifestation of the power of God which is beyond your ability. Uh, grace uh, is the glory of God which is cocooning you uh, even in a season when others are crying. Uh, grace, uh, lift up your voice. Uh, decree and declare the grace of God uh, over our life uh, will not expire even as a nation. It is grace uh, that sustains you and I. No matter what the economy is saying, uh, this grace will not expire. This grace will not expire. As a nation, it will not expire. As families, it will not expire. Lift up your voice. Decree it. So shall it be. Your healing will not expire. A river too wide to swim through. I don't know what you're already experiencing. He healed you before, he will heal you again. It will not expire. Your peace will not expire. In the name of Jesus, peace over your family, peace over your marriage, peace over your children, peace over your health, peace. Even in our nation, a river that we could only swim in. Lift up your voice. Say, we will not see the end of this river of life. Ah, we will not see the end. We will not see the end. We will swim in it for generations if Jesus tarries. Somebody, I'm speaking into your life and I'm decreeing and declaring. If Jesus tarries, do not be afraid. The hand of God is upon your life. The waters will never dry out. Look at verse number two. He brought me out by the way of the north gate. Ezekiel 47 verse 2. He led me around on the outside of the outer gateway facing the east and there was water running on the right side. But do you know what that water in the beginning? It was trickling. The water was trickling from the south side and before you could measure and it became a river. Lift up your voices. Say in the name of Jesus my trickling finances will become generational wealth my trickling grace will become a glorious one it is trickling now there is a wisdom to manage small things that makes the small thing to become a big thing many people don't know there is a grace there is a wisdom that you used to manage small things if you have a small thing it may be small but do it well I tell people we may be small but we do things well we may be small. Even if I have one shoe, I'll make sure it's a good shoe. The water was trickling. Anybody with trickling water must not be wasteful. Otherwise, it will not gather. <laughs> the water was trickling from the south side. As God releases divine capacity to you, as the Spirit of God releases incremental grace to you, I decree your trickles will become a river in every area. Yekele Moshata, your trickles will become a river. All the great people you see today, if you trace them back, you will see there was a place they were trickling. Even the famous people preaching all about. When you go back and search, there was a season of a trickling in their lives. Hey, your faithfulness to your trickles is what will guarantee that you have a river. <laughs> hey, the river may be very attractive, not the trickles. Hey, but somebody I pray for you, the grace uh, to turn your small to great. The grace, the wisdom, the anointing, the capacity, the knowledge that you need uh, to turn your small to great. Uh, receive it in the name of Jesus. And one of those things is faithfulness. Anyone who is faithful in little, God will entrust with much. <laughs> your small church even if there are 10 people be faithful to the people those are the things that God is looking at your department yes be faithful and come on time do what you are supposed to do you know some people they are very funny they will not give their testimony in their church or in their small church they want to go to one big church where everybody is there that's where they want to give testimony uh -huh. be faithful so that your trickles will turn to a river I'm speaking to everyone who is in a trickling season now receive grace. One of the things that encourages me as a person is this. No matter where I am, no matter what has happened, and I tell my children, never ever forget that God is with you. Because I know that God is with me. Even when I make a mistake, I know God is with me. He doesn't want me to be destroyed. And so I want you to know in your trickling season, God is with you. <laughs> a song says, even though we don't see him, he's working. Even though we don't feel it, 
He's working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. He never stops working. Even though I don't feel it, he's working. Even though I don't see it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. He never stops working. Never forget. He never stops working. God is with you. He never stops working. And so your flow. Don't abandon your flow. <laughs> hey, your own flow may be a trickle now. It's like a gutter. It's not yet a river. Don't abandon your flow. As long as you know this is where God called me to. You know, many of us sometimes in life, we look at somebody else's thing. You know, this is your flow. This is my flow. Prayer is my flow. Uh, if you look at some other people, you want to be like them. <laughs> it seems that this is the area of ministry that people like, stay with your flow. Stay with your trickle and begin to dig your well of anointing. Continue to dig your well of anointing. You know what it is with the flow when a river is flowing? It may get to a place where there seems to be a blockade. What are those things that can block our flow? Sin can be a block. Yes. It was sin that terminated the ministerial flow in the life of Eli. The mantle could not flow to his children. Our children will not commit the sin that will make them to lose out on what God has prepared. Sin, it was just sin. God is a generational God. He's the God of the son, of the Father and the sons. So let's be careful. May the mercy of God speak for somebody in the name of Jesus. What is it that can block our flow? Saul. He was the one first chosen by God. The Bible says from the shoulder up, he was taller than everybody. Saul was a hand-picked king. But disobedience... He made him to be rejected. Ah, somebody, God will not reject you. God will not reject me. God will not reject our offering. Ah, Karaba, it's a terrible thing. When people reject you, if God doesn't reject you, it won't matter. But may God not reject us. In the name of Jesus. And so, Saul couldn't flow. What he carried couldn't flow to his own children. Even though he had a son who was the friend of David. Jonathan. He gave back to sons, but the mantle of kingship couldn't flow to them. Let us check ourselves. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Rako Shata. Say every character deficiency that will terminate the flow of favor. Every character deficiency that will terminate the flow of grace. Every character deficiency that will terminate the mantle I carry. Oh God, take it out of my life. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. That's a prayer point right there. It was a character deficiency that finished Saul. Ilako Shata Yalaba. Lift up your voice. Do you know there are some things in our life? Whether you like it or not is a tendency. If God does not open your eyes. Saul was the son of a rich man. Yeah? God found him aristocrat. He was looking for his father's asses. It's just as if in today's balance, somebody was looking for his father's cars that he brought him from the port. And they didn't know where one. One trailer they are looking for is like maybe one of these people with trailers. I don't want to mention their name. They are looking for their trailers. And then the father sent the son with some of the people working with them. And they are driving around. Where is this trailer? Hey. He was looking for his father's asses. It was not, it was not a boy. It was an ajebo. Ajebo to the court. <laughs> And because he was like that, he was not used to being reprimanded. He was not used to being reprimanded. That's the difference with David. <laughs> David was a boy boy in his family. They also send him on errand. So immediately he does something wrong. And they tell him, you just there are some things in our lives. We have a blind spot. We don't know it. Today, lift up your voice, Father. Open my eyes to every blind spot in my life that can cause a termination in the flow of grace. Ah, yes. It was not used to waiting for people. <laughs> Saul was not used to waiting for people. He's used to people waiting on him. And so, he couldn't wait for the prophet to come 
and he went to offer the sacrifice. Have we not seen some people who have so much grace? Have we not seen people who are so provided for? They will not put their hand in what will finish them. Ah, lift up your voice and begin to pray for your children. In the name of Jesus, my children will not commit error. A error that will terminate the flow of grace, the flow of glory. Hey, Father, open my eyes in the name of Jesus. Flow. <laughs> what is it that can terminate the flow? The Bible says the grace of God has been revealed unto all men. As many of us that God has called, yes, we are recipients of His grace. But yet, there was a man called Jabez. His own mother polluted the flow and called him sorrow until he rose up and he began to wonder, how come it is only bad things happening to me? Remember the water flowed from the temple, from the south side. His own was not even flowing at all. He knew there was something wrong. Hey, somebody, the reason why you are not seeing the flow, hey, you know that you are loaded, but you are stranded. I tell you, there are people you know you are loaded, but you are stranded. You are wondering what is going on here. I went to the university. How come it's not happening for me? I have the thing everybody has. How come my own life? There is something. A word has been released to the origin. Ah, the water flowed from the, under the temple. Hey, the mother of Jabez polluted the source with her words. Any word that anyone has spoken over your life any word that anyone who has spiritual parental authority has spoken every negativity today I stand as the prophet over your life even though Jacob cursed Reuben but Moses stood to change that curse today I decree and declare over your life over your family every negative word that is making polluted water to flow from your life I decree and declare by the blood of Jesus let there be a purification right now in the name of Jesus I decree the blood of Jesus begin to visit your foundation begin to visit your root begin to visit everywhere where pollution has come in in the name of Jesus the Bible says it shall come to pass in that day Isaiah 10 27 it says the burden on your shoulder shall be taken away the yoke on your neck shall be destroyed by the anointing I speak over your life there is no distance in the spirit and I address uh, every body and every yoke uh, hear ye the word of the Lord. Uh, I command uh, every body, uh, financial body, uh, emotional body, uh, trauma bodies, uh, lift right now. In the name of Jesus, uh, be broken right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, lift up your heads, uh, all ye gates, uh, be ye lifted up, uh, ye everlasting doors. Uh, let the King of glory uh, come into that life. Uh, come into that family. Come into that marriage. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, hey, again I say, uh, lift up your head. Uh, foundational gates. Uh, gates of abuse. Uh, gates of shame. Uh, gates of reproach. Uh, as you hear the sound uh, of my voice, uh, I decree and declare, let them begin to break now. In the name of Jesus, uh, somebody come out of depression right now right now. In the name of Jesus uh, I decree and declare in the name of the risen Christ uh, right now help us uh, begin to arise uh, in the name of Jesus uh, I call forth uh, unsolicited help uh, hey uh, David was not solicited by Mephibosheth uh, the spirit of God uh, stirred him up uh, to begin to look for somebody he didn't know I decree and declare help us you do not know let them begin to rise up help us you do not know I summon them from the south the west, the east and the north in the name of Jesus and they will begin to look for you hey no matter the zebras zebra wanted to block it <laughs> hey every time something good is coming 
The devil always makes an attempt. But today I decree and declare. Every satanic limitation and distraction. Is broken in the name of Jesus. That which God wants to do in your life. Uh, hey let it be manifest. Now. In the name of Jesus. Now. I want you to rise up wherever you are. Yes rise up. Rise up. Rise up. I want to begin to speak. Uh, begin to decree and declare. And say father in the name of Jesus. Uh, you my heavens. Uh, open now. Isaiah 64 verse number 1 it says rend the heavens uh, and come down lift up your voice and begin to address uh, your heavens uh, and say every heaven over my life over my finances over my family open up right now for a fresh flow uh, for a fresh flow uh, in the name of Jesus your heaven will not be brass let there be a flow now rimo koshata yadaba oremo sata yadaba orebo shelele Ina male mo kataye, ina mazedele. Oh Lord, we worship you. The Lord is doing things right now. Are you sick in your body? There is a flow of healing now. Believe it. There is a flow of healing now. Receive it by faith. Lay your hand on wherever it is. Yeah, the river of healing is flowing. It's flowing. Makoshatayaba. Elemosatayaba. Thank you, Jesus. It's flowing. Receive it. He was wounded for your transgressions. Bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by stripes, you are healed. Heal me, O Lord. And I will be healed. Save me. And I will be saved. Heal. Yes, just worship him. You are the one. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The healing power is flowing. Receive it. Receive it. Lay your hand on your head. Lay your hand. Lay your hand. It's by faith we receive. I speak to chronic diseases. I speak to tumors. Hear the word of the Lord now. Begin to melt in the name of Jesus as you go for the medical test again. They are going to tell you that things have changed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Anyone going for any biopsy, anyone going for any scan, anyone going for any medical examination today, whatever they examine in your body, they will find the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, I speak to tumors to disappear now. In the name of Jesus, hear ye the word of the Lord. Akarabashata. He says, if you say to this mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart. I stand on the authority of that word. I speak to blood diseases now. The name of Jesus is above you now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to bone-related diseases. Begin to give way now. Healing spring forth. Rakoshata. I speak to speech retardation. Hey, in the book of Isaiah, it says, The tongue of the rash will be made smooth. Yes, for any boy, any child, on any spectrum of autism, begin to move now. Yes, begin to make progress now. Now, lay your hand on that child. Somebody with a child with autism, you are saying this broadcast. Lay your hand on that child, and I decree a flow, a flow. Hey, it will just be like the ankle level. Let your child begin to make incremental progress on that spectrum of autism now till he comes out. Now, now, in the name of Jesus. Yes. I release the power in the blood of Jesus. That's a flow. <laughs> Emmanuel's veins is flowing with the blood. Even at this hour, even at this time, even at this season, Akaraba, the blood of Jesus never dries up. <laughs> yes, there is power in the blood. The Bible says uh, the flow of the blood, uh, it carries at least five to six basic advantages or functions. The first thing is the flow of the blood. The Bible says the blood speaks. The blood of Jesus, it speaks better things. Right now, we tap into that flow. 
everything speaking negativity over your life, I bring the voice of Jesus to shut it down. In the name of Jesus. Where there is a negative voice speaking poverty, speaking shame over your life, I decree, let the blood begin to speak. Begin to turn shame to fame. Begin to turn reproach to fame. Begin to turn rejection to selection. In the name of Jesus, begin to turn scarcity to plenty. The blood speaks. The flow of the blood, it speaks. Hey, the Bible says uh, we overcome with the blood. Somebody, you are an overcomer. That challenging situation in your marriage, you are an overcomer. Stay with the world. Stay with the world. That challenging situation in your family, you are an overcomer in the name of Jesus. An overcomer is somebody that overcomes. You overcome a challenge. Don't say, oh, how come this is happening to me? It may happen, but you will overcome. You are prevailing over that situation, over that sickness. You are prevailing in the name of Jesus because the flow of the blood of Jesus, it guarantees us that we overcome. The third thing, the blood of Jesus atones for us. You know, I said the blood of Jesus, it speaks. And then we overcome by the blood of Jesus now says the blood of Jesus atones to atone is he cleanses it no matter where you have done the Bible says in the book of Romans yes there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who no longer walk after the flesh but after the spirit I don't care where you missed it the blood has atoned for you you are justified by the blood in the name of Jesus no longer will your head go down it is the devil that brings condemnation. The Holy Spirit can convict you of sin so that you change. You are not to be condemned. Somebody, don't worry. Your past will not be a stumbling block for you. Jesus has paid the price. The blood atones for us. He says even if our sins are as red as scarlet, the blood will can wash us as white as snow. Somebody, the Lord is calling you at this time. The Lord is calling you. He says, I've paid the price. He says, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. Are you there? You don't know Jesus. This is your time. This is your time. Yes, wherever you are, put your hand on your chest. He's calling you. He's calling you to his side. Yes, all you need is to say yes. I say yes. Oh, yes. To your will and to your way. I say yes. Oh, yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I agree and my answer will be yes. Oh yes. Is there somebody saying yes to Jesus? Come say yes. Oh yes. To his will and to his way. Come say yes. Jesus is calling you. Why don't you trust him and obey? For his spirit speaks to you. With your whole heart, do agree. Let your answer be yes. Oh, yes. Somebody, the Lord is calling you right there. You want to give your life to Jesus. Put your hand on your chest and do say after me. Say, I've heard your word tonight, oh Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my savior. Be my Lord. I confess my sins. Wash me with the precious blood. And bring me to your son. I confess I am born again. In Jesus name. That's what it takes. With your mouth you confess unto salvation. And as many who have given their life to Christ. Please indicate. And you will be followed up. Four things you need to do when you give your life to Christ. Find a Bible believing church. Yeah, you need a body of Christ. Make sure you pray every day. Read your Bible and talk to somebody else about Jesus. Four things you need to do. So the the flow of the blood of Jesus, it speaks. We overcome by the blood. The blood atones for us. And because the blood atones for us, we are able to be saved. The fourth thing that the flow of the blood does is we have protection by the blood. The blood is flowing right now. When you put the blood on the lintel, the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, when they put the blood on their lintel, 
they were protected from the angel of death. And that's why now our lintel is our mouth. We plead the blood. And so as you plead the blood of Jesus on your children, on your family, you are protected from every evil around. Yes. Begin to plead that blood, the flow, the flow of the blood of Jesus. It speaks better things. We overcome by the blood. We have atonement by the blood. We have protection by the blood. Yes. Begin to call for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. There is power in the blood. There is power in that blood. Power in the blood. Yes, begin to plead the blood. The blood of Jesus. Plead it over your family, over your children. Plead it over your work. We plead the blood. The blood of Jesus. We plead the blood. The blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. The blood of Jesus. We plead the blood. The blood. Somebody said, I plead the blood. Yes. The flow, <laughs> the flow, the flow. Right now, I'm going to lead you in about 10 prayer points using the blood, the flow of the blood. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Lift up your voice. I overcome sickness by the blood of Jesus. Rise up wherever you are. I overcome. I overcome. In the name of Jesus. I overcome this marital challenge. What are those marital challenges right now? Lay them before the cross. Say, I overcome by the blood. Yes, we are waging war with the blood. We are just praying with one scripture, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him. Lift up your voice. I overcome scarcity by the blood of Jesus. I overcome, I overcome, I overcome. In the name of Jesus, say, I overcome failure by the blood of Jesus. I will not fail. I plead the blood of Jesus on my ways. In the name of Jesus, plead the blood, plead the blood. Koshata. Next, you are going to decree and declare, I overcome death by the blood. Ah, Rebosha. Say, I shall live and not die. Till a ripe old age, I will see my children's children. Lift up your voice, Ikadaba. Dreams of death, I cancel you by the blood of Jesus. Lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Rebuka Shanda Yabagana. Hey, say sicknesses of death. I overcome you by the blood of Jesus because the Bible says uh, this sickness shall not be unto death. Uh, it shall be for the glory of God uh, to be manifest. Uh, speak that word uh, over anyone sick in your family. Lift up your voice. Uh, I overcome by the blood of Jesus. Reiko Shata. Lift up your voice. Uh, I overcome rejection by the blood of Jesus. Uh, Every yoke of rejection, every yoke of rejection in my life, I command you to break by the blood. In the name of Jesus. Yes, number six, you are going to decree and declare. I cancel every evil word spoken into my life by the blood of Jesus. Evil investment. Hey, the mother of Jabez invested evil words in his life. Begin to cancel it with the blood. Every evil word that anyone has spoken over my life, I cancel with the blood of Jesus. Evil prophecies be canceled by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Even evil words that I said to myself, words that I said in anger over my children, over my marriage, over my spouse, over my work, words that I said when I was frustrated Frustrated, I cancel them by the blood of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Rico Shata. Ikeleboko Shata Laba. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. 
decree, any evil calendar, any evil record, evil date that the enemy has set for me, evil calendar, evil prophecy with my name, be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Jadaba Rekete, that's prayer number seven. Ikasata Yadaba, any evil register here with my family or my ministry or my name or my business, I cancel you with the blood of Jesus. You are going to lift up your voice and declare and declare. Say by the blood of Jesus, sir, I wage war against any satanic altar. Speaking against my life. Uh, any altar that any token representing me. Uh, reboko shata, right now be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Uh, jadaba daba rekete ke yekete. Any evil altar right now. I release the blood of Jesus. Uh, any evil investment. Uh, any blood that has been sacred. Oh my God. Oh shata. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. Once I was in my office. And some, some fraudsters. They came to our ministry and the woman was drenched in blood. They had done a blood sacrifice and the woman entered. My PA brought the woman. I was expecting another person. This woman entered and said, Apostle, this is the woman. As I looked at the woman, they said, hey, she needs help. Compassion would have overtaken me. I didn't know it was a setup. She was drenched in blood. I said, Madam, where are you coming from? The gang had a car parked. The car had no number. They had entered our compound. They were waiting for me to come out. So immediately I saw her with blood because I'm a woman. You know her. And then what's wrong with you? Are you okay? I didn't know it was a setup. I just told all my people, carry this woman to the bathroom. Go and give her a bath. Change her clothes. We washed off the blood. It was when we finished wash, washing everything off her. She was behaving as if she was not okay. But it was a setup. They thought I would come. Whether they wanted to kidnap me, I didn't know. We washed off the blood. Then I said, where are you from? The Holy Spirit said, be careful. So I didn't go out. And the woman went to the people. And that was when they drove off. And then the security man said, do you know that these people came here last week to look for you? You were not around. They now came back. So a woman that they claimed they saw on the streets. That's the story. That they picked up this woman from the streets. We know that this is a ministry that caters for women. So we are bringing her here for help. How come they brought the woman last week? They now brought her again this week. They had prepared something with blood. You know, they go with occultism. So I would have just gone with them. Okay, let's go somewhere. Let's go. I didn't step out. It was later we realized they had a gang going about defrauding people, kidnapping people. They did a blood sacrifice. But the power in the blood of Jesus neutralized it. I did not even know. We gave the woman a bath <laughs> thinking she was not okay. I didn't know that was her power. Today I decree any garments, anything that anybody wants to use against you, the blood of Jesus spoiled it. The sacrifice they had done. So, as I saw the woman, I was just supposed to follow them. It was not a kidnap of force. It was a will, it would have been a willful kidnap. Ah, dash. She just followed them, and one woman came and they would not know where the person went to. But I didn't know. So there I decree and declare. Hey, anywhere they fortify with the blood of goats, anywhere they fortify with the blood of ram, the blood of Jesus spoil their sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, they will not overpower you. They will not overpower you. They will not overpower you. The blood speaks. Oh, Father, we thank you for the blood. Ah, last but not the least. We have victory by the blood. We are set free by the blood. We have salvation by the blood. The Bible says the life of a thing is in the blood. Hey, we have life and we have it more abundantly because he shed his blood. Without the blood, there would have been no New Testament. The testator writes it with the blood because he died. He shed his blood. You and I can claim redemption. And that's why we're going back to that song that we started with. Because he lives. Thank you, Jesus. We confess tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because we know. We know. Owns our future. Thank you, Lord. Our life is worth a living.
just because he lives. I prophesy over your life. The flow of grace. The flow of favor. The flow of mercy. The flow of helpers. The flow of divine opportunities. The flow of divine enablement. Hey, it will not run out on your life in Jesus name. Let them be activated now, now, now. Makoya dalaba. Incremental grace. The grace you enjoyed before, let there be an increase. The mercy you enjoyed before, let there be a higher dimension. In the name of Jesus, you are moving from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter to a perfect day. It is well with you in the matchless name of Jesus. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Lord.